Madam Vice President, How nice to you? see you. Thanks for hosting us here in Good Grand Rapids. You. Well, I'm glad you're here. Good we, to see you. Just going to ask you three or four quick questions as folks want to say hi to you quickly. Okay. In these waiting days, I want to ask you first. At the convention, you cast yourself as a joyful warrior, but in recent rallies, you've increasingly attacked former President Trump as an unstable and unhinged. Is that and, an effective closing? Is that an effective closing argument? I think that one is not to the exclusion of the other. I, I have a great deal of optimism, as do the people who are here, about the future of our country. I think that's one of the things that is building the momentum that we have. People really do believe in what is the promise of America and our responsibility to fight for it. That is not in conflict with also being clear-eyed about the danger that Donald Trump poses based on the language that he has used and, and his admiration for dictators, his inability to really focus on the needs of the American people, in particular working people, these things are not in conflict. They all exist at the same time. The critics who say the joy is gone, you respond. Oh, I'm having a great time. <laughs> let, let me ask you if I can about one of the challenges the campaign faces right now. Polls show that there is a widening gender gap, that Donald Trump leads particularly among men by 16 points right now. Why is that and why do you think there is a disconnect for you with men right now? Well, let me tell you, you can look at this audience and you can see that there are people of every background and gender who are showing up by the thousands. And I think it is because they know I intend to be a president for all Americans. And that is how I'm campaigning to earn the vote of every American, not, so only, explains not only about their gender, but about their geographic location and, and unburdened by who they may have voted for in the past. I think this really is a moment like we saw with the Republicans who are supporting me most publicly recently, that it's a time to put country before party and really, again, with a sense of optimism, fight for what we care about. Just to be clear, though, uh Men still say, by 16% margin, they're supporting Donald Trump right now. Why do you think that is? It's not the experience that I'm having, to be honest with you. You think the men are on board? Yeah, let, I mean, look around. Let, then yeah. let me ask you if I can. Biden this week, President Biden said this week that every president has to cut their own path. What is one policy that you would have done differently over these last three and a half years than President Biden? I mean, to be very candid with you, you even including Mike Pence, um, vice presidents are not critical of their presidents. I think that really actually, in terms of the tradition of it and also just going forward, it does not make for a productive and important relationship. He's now giving happen. you that green light with his comments that you can carve your own path. So now that you have this ability to yeah, say that to be on your well, own? Well, no, going forward, there is no question that I bring my own experiences and my own life experiences. Is there career. a policy that stands out to you in particular either? Sure. I mean, my approach to what we need to do around Medicare covering home health care born out of my experience of, of taking care of my mother. Um, my priority on housing, one, because I know what it means, affordable housing and the ability to buy a home. Again, my own experience, my mother saved up and not until I was a teenager was she able to do it. But also I know that for so many young people who I speak with around our country, the American dream is just really out of reach. So my policy about $25,000 down payment assistance to help them get their foot in the door. The work that I have been doing and will bring to the presidency around emphasizing small businesses as being part of the real backbone of America's economy. Those are the experiences and the ideas that I have that are about moving forward and really in being a part of the next generation of leadership in America. Last one, I know I gotta let you go. We heard some people chanting happy birthday to you. You have a milestone birthday on Sunday. Chivalry is not dead. I'm not going to say what age you're turning then, but you talk about <laughs> generational change. What does generational change mean to you? I think it's about a state of mind, and it is about understanding that we should be focused on this moment, and this is a very particular moment where there is a lot happening in our country that is about innovation, that are about really new approaches to long-standing challenges, and it, there's about a, it's a new generation of thinking as much as anything else. Madam Vice President, be safe on the trail. Happy birthday. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.